Warriors, hello and welcome to this show. I am so glad that you clicked on. I don't know about you, but this time of year brings up a lot for me. A lot of memories of me starting like, you know, eating plans and weight loss plans and 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 with just such a fierce commitment only to find myself, you know, in different stages of like throwing my hands up and discouraged with myself. Um, I am so sick of that pattern. I'm sick. I got sick of it with myself and chose differently, you know, many years ago. And I am sick of seeing other amazing warriors out there wasting your earth energy on this nonsense. And so <laughs> this just this pattern of us like beating ourselves up and, and, and anyhow, join me and this week's guest, we, we put that punitive past behind us for our sakes, for our body sakes. And for the generation of women after us, the generations, plural, please, this episode is for you, whether you want to lose weight or not, it doesn't matter, no matter your age, it is time for us to do this caring for our body and ourselves and our whole, you know, our bigger selves are being better, please. So Dr. Jenny, Ginny Trierweiler is a psychologist and certified health coach who scoured the research to find evidence-based answers to her own eating and weight issues. She discovered key principles to actually nourish the body so you can activate health and healing from within and naturally release the excess weight. Join us, warriors. This is a great one. I'm grateful for Dr. Trierweiler for coming on the show. Yay, us. Let's go. Hello and welcome, Ginny, to the Love Your Life show. I am so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I love your show. Thank you. And I I want, I was so excited to have you on, especially when I'm airing this this time of year when a lot of people are dealing with, you know, New Year's resolutions and goals and they have all these ideas. And yet, you know, listeners of this show, this isn't our first rodeo. We've done it before. And, you know, sometimes the my listeners will set a goal but then there's like this little voice in their head that's like oh you weren't really going to do that and this isn't going to follow through and that okay. won't really work um right. and know that you have a lot of experience with this on helping yes. women have specifically around weight loss and helping women yes. have sustainable weight loss so could we just yes. start a little for people who may not have don't know about your wonderful self like how did you get so passionate about this topic and what makes it personal to you yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm a psychologist. And uh, when I was in my 40s, I suddenly started finding things didn't work anymore. I thought I had it all figured out. I read, I'm smart, I know what to do. I'll just eat less, exercise more. And it always worked until my 40s. Mm, absolutely. And then it didn't work anymore. And I, um, I spent over 10 years continuing to double down on eat less exercise more. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fascinating, like how little can I eat yeah. and still be okay and started feeling like something's wrong with this picture. I'm sorry, is that sound really distracting? No, it's not. I can okay. hear it in the background. It's like a waterfall. Okay. It? Yeah. It's the dog saying I'm going to break out of here. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, so what happened, I had this big wake up call. I, qu I quit trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results because I started working in nursing homes mm -hmm. and I had all these patients coming up to me saying, you got to get me out of here. My kids mm -hmm. are taking my car and my home and, you know, I don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And so I started trying to figure out, can I help you get out of here? What's what's the health issue and can we turn it around? And what I discovered was most of them are these lifestyle diseases mm. that are taking most of us down these days, the, like the last 10 years of our lives of high blood pressure, heart disease, um, diabetes, dementia, and cancer. Mm. And by the time they're in a nursing home, they have passed a threshold. They can't turn it around anymore. Mm. And it makes me want to cry when I think about it because I started thinking, you know, Jenny, this is where you're headed. Mm. Like I could barely walk anymore from so much pain and inflammation. Here I'm thinking I'm this healthy, youthful person. Mm. Everything's fine. I'm not that, you know, and then I'm starting to feel like maybe I'm approaching the nursing home if I don't make a change. I was 60 pounds overweight. I was pre-diabetic. 
it's like I started facing the truth that there's some real problems in my mm. body. And I and as I researched it, it looked like these were caused by eating and drinking more than anything. Mm. And I was very devoted to a very indulgent way of eating and drinking. Like it was my self care mm, is I yeah. just eat and drink the most pleasing things every day because I work so hard. I take care of everyone else and I deserve it. Oh yeah. It's like, it's a treat. Like we're telling ourselves it's a, it's treat. a treat to eat yeah. it and then feel so poorly in our body. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's our, it's a, such a cultural thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just started realizing this isn't working the mm -hmm. way I think it is. It's not giving me the best life. It's giving me a few moments of pleasure and then pain and misery. Mm -hmm. And so, but I have to tell you, I I'm trained in evidence-based practices. I thought you need to go find the evidence-based practice for eating. Right. I couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. I ended up having to, you know, there's a million pieces of, uh, arguments and evidence and ideas and no, I finally went straight to the research looking at what's healthy to eat and what gives sustainable weight loss. Mm -hmm. And as I started studying that stuff and implementing it, the weight started falling off, the, the pain and inflammation started healing, all these symptoms, insomnia and brain fog and mm -hmm. hot flashes, it all reversed. And so I realized I need a different approach to my body and to eating for nourishment instead of what can I get away with and how will I make up for it tomorrow? Oh, I love it. Yes. Yes, please. Like all right. <laughs> I think listeners can really relate. I know, you know, a former me can really relate to this. You know, first of all, that idea that the food is a treat for us and a reward that we work. Yes. I mean, there's so many of us out there working so hard, carrying so much more. I do podcast episodes on here about, you know, the mother load, the emotional load, the emotional yes. load. And all the studies that show that whether you have kids or not, women are doing more than 50% of, of, of <laughs> so much of it. <laughs> Paired with a, you know, this belief that like, you know, what's acceptable for self-care for women? Is it acceptable to, you know, and it's, yeah. it's really, I know for me as, you know, a younger self and, and in my forties, it was much more acceptable for me to like sit down with the ice cream at the end of the day or pour yeah. a glass of wine than it was to like sit and read a book at a park when my kids were at school. Like that would have yeah. been almost like a scandal. Well, who's going to make money off that? Right. Who, that's a very good point. Very helpful. <laughs> no so profit I, motive in you're sitting in a park with a book, right? Right. Right. And it's so interesting. And just, and just also for, I think for listeners to just sort of look at that, just, uh, you know, I, the, this idea that like is food a treat when it actually leads, you know, the short term treat for the long term not treat. Right. <laughs> and yes. also just like, yes, like what, why is it that we think, you know, yes, you've had a hard day. I'm not discounting that, but why is it right. that food or alcohol is our, sort of yeah. the one option that we have to to I treat know. us could there be I others um i know yeah, yeah. we think we think about decompressing at the end of the day and we our go-to is food or drink or both and mm -hmm. and i realized i'm teaching people coping skills all day in my practice as a psychologist mm -hmm. and the only coping skills i have are eating and drinking <laughs> i don't have any other ones left yeah. anymore what yeah. happened to that yeah. And so I want listeners to hear that. So if they're like, oh my God, but what do I like? That's me too. Here is a woman who has been trained her whole life in this and discovers this. So we want to just remove the shame and meet yeah. ourselves in midlife and be like, yeah, okay. So that's, I don't really know how to care for myself besides food yeah. or alcohol, because that's something I hear often when, you know, people are sort of, maybe they're in that transition stage from having kids at home to empty nest, or they're, yeah. you know, from a one career to another or whatever you know, one of the questions is like, well, what do you like to do? And they're like, I don't freaking know. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Eating and drinking. No? <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. And you just start somewhere. But to, I think, yeah. you know, what I want to focus on today with, with your interview is that, that, you know, just attention that maybe that's what we're doing. And that is sort of yeah. like, you know, maybe that's one tool for sure. Like, yeah, sure. I'm not saying don't ever have a cupcake, but like, right. let's not let that be the only tool in your toolbox. Yeah. And then to start also looking at how, you know, what you said, eating less and exercising more is, is really not helpful for us. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's like so mean, it's so punitive. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
But so what, where do we end with that? I right, mean, like, so, what is that? Like, so were these like 80 year old, like, you know, oh, he's moving. <laughs> like, no, I have it's no energy worse. because I don't eat anything. Yeah. Yes. Which is, and, and that to me is, it's almost like nature with menopause forces us into this, this other sort of model of female, you know, wise woman taking care of ourselves in a more helpful way. So I, so I guess what I would love to hear is, is like, what did you learn? What actually does work for healthy, sustainable weight loss? Mm -hmm. Well, um, one of the things that I really learned is I need to focus on what nourishes my body, what gives my body energy rather than how little can I eat? Mm -hmm. um, or the, like, we have a lot of cultural ideas that are leading us astray. Like the healthy alternatives idea is constantly promoted in magazines because it makes a really good article. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea that I'm gonna eat bad stuff, but it's gonna be the healthier alternative of the bad stuff is not really our best wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like to say that our our nutritional environment that we live in now is deranged. Mm -hmm. It is leading us so astray. Like we have a wisdom within, but who knows where it is under the way we've been trained to eat in this society. I mean, and I just I just want to pause. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this yeah, is go ahead. my son and I were talking the other day and we were saying like, what did grandma like? So my mom, but you know, even like people like, and, and we were saying like, what did they used to, like, what was their eating back? Like, what was it, you know, because like they didn't have KFC, they didn't have Cheetos, they didn't, and we're like, maybe right. it was like having an extra potato at right. dinner. <laughs> like, what right. actually was it? Like, canned food was, yeah. the, I mean, maybe they had like canned green beans was eating bad, but their options for eating bad were were yes. minuscule compared to right. what we have now. Uh, yes. Just, yeah, fascinating. And just to sort of look at that, like our yes. options for this quick fix, this short term you know, hit of dopamine, all the chemicals in our body that like light us up yes. are so much <laughs> greater yes. and more damaging now. Um, it's yeah. like this constant yeah, so 80% mm -hmm. of us now are overweight or obese. It's expected 50% of us will be obese by the end of this decade. Mm. I mean, this is not like, if I look at pictures of people on the beach when I was a child, People were not obese. Yeah. This is yeah. not normal. And mm -hmm. the thing is, it's going along with diabetes and heart disease and mm -hmm. these dis and dementia, like yeah. these diseases we all hope we don't get, but they seem kind of normal. Maybe they just have to happen. They don't. Mm -hmm. it, they were happening because of our deranged food environment. Right. That is addictive. And so that's where I like to yeah. sort of remove the shame. It, it, it is like yes. that high concentrated form of sugar that our grandmas yes. used to get in like one cookie. Now we can get through a straw at Starbucks really easily. Yes. <laughs> you know, that, like, so yes, I very they much- are addictive. I, I have a friend in the alcohol marketing industry mm -hmm. who said, if you could see us sitting around in rooms trying to figure out how to addict more women that are elderly and more women who are younger, like getting like mommy wine culture. That wasn't the th a thing when I was growing up. That was considered a bad idea. Yes. Now it's like, how could you possibly be a parent without drinking? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very so, helpful to notice that, that that there's just billions of dollars being spent trying to convince us that the bad stuff is not that bad, mm -hmm. and we want to believe it because it feels pleasurable in the moment but i think we don't realize how much it's stealing our health i'm mad about it can you tell i'm like well i i 100 agree with you and and it is just this it's like we don't know what we don't know and i had read a great book on on alcohol it was quit like a woman where they did yeah. sort of go into the alcohol industry and and how it was specifically targeted yes. with women and then i took it more as a feminist issue but all of this you know with yeah. food too and so it is you know, some yes. of what I want a listener to hear is, again, I keep saying like, remove the shame because when we are yes. in of shame and feeling like we're doing something wrong and it's like, but wait, Jenny and Susie, like I'm one of the ones that's, you know, 60 pounds overweight and I'm the one who's yeah. pre-diabetic. It's like, yes. of course, okay, we get it. Yeah. Like, there's no shame. Yeah. It's just starting to see that, yeah. you know, not only is alcohol addictive, but so is sugar. And so is yes. this idea that, that, and we're rewarded for like, okay, you 
are eating at the end of the day to de-stress instead of yelling at your husband or yelling at your kids or sitting and reading a book in the park that like, of course you're in this place. And so now what do we do? (laughs) What do we do to get out of it? Yeah. 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 I think we do have like a native wisdom within that we need to tap into. And I noticed my mindset changed from what can I get away with to, oh, shoot, I got to give these things, certain things up and it's going to be really sad and miserable. I'm never going to be happy ever again in my life. And then I started changing to what if I just decide I can eat what's good for me every single meal like I love my body that way. And what if I find a way to fall in love with that? Yeah. Um, like That's I can- That's a very important shift. Right? From, like all oh, what, like focusing on what we're gonna miss and lying yes. about it sort of. Like, oh, I'm gonna miss that quick hit of whatever. Or, and, and you know, I know this is about food, but alcohol is a great example. Like all oh, that is. first sip yeah. of- whatever, when it calms my whole system and I'm not as stressed anymore, but we're not looking at 12 hours from then when we have disrupted sleep, we can't button our pants. We're right. Right. And and bringing it more to like, you can have whatever you want. Just really like, what does feel good to you? What feels good to your body that? Yeah. Understand, understand the cost when it's something addictive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. I I agree, alcohol and, and food, pretty much the same same issue for me, for a lot of us. Like, yeah. But won't I be really sad without it? What if I'm not? Right. Yeah. What what if if I don't mess with like the brain fog and the disrupted sleep and the like all right, the depression. Well, alcohol is pretty fast. You talked like there's 20 minutes of pleasure and then two hours of feeling crummy. For sure. Especially as we age, because we metabolize it faster and and it's, it's, it's a very interesting um, thing. So, so when women are thinking like, okay, so how do I start with this nourishing? Like, how do I, you know, Mm. to this place of, of, yeah. Well, I want to tell you one of the things I figured out, and I know this from evidence-based practices is, um, we just finding a bunch of tips that you like and throwing them together doesn't tend to add up to big results, Mm -hmm. right? You Mm -hmm. can start doing a little bit of stuff that might make some difference. And that, and what I would say to do a little bit of a start eating abundant, highly nutritious foods that you have no doubt are nutritious. Mm. That doesn't mean they're in a package where you can see there's a bunch of ingredients, but it has all these nutrition labels on it. It means like food you have no doubt is nutritious. Maybe our grandmothers used to eat, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like the whole real foods, we're not eating anywhere near enough of them. And so most of my clients start with eating quite a bit more than they've been eating. Mm. Uh, and it changes everything. Your body says, hello, thank you. Yeah. Like I don't have to hold on to everything mm. like I've been holding on. Right. Mm. And I have a client right now just started with me four weeks ago. And at first she was like, I don't know if this is going to work any more than anything else. And already she's like, I'm eating so much more food than I've ever eaten. I'm losing weight. I'm feeling more energy. That's what losing weight should feel like when you're doing it in this nourishing kind of way. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling exhausted and depleted, it may mean you're not giving your body the nourishment it needs. Yeah. And so I think what I'm hearing you say is that it's like an umbrella, like the mindset shift is the umbrella, like that to shift away from you know, what can I do to like, get my body back to this size and, and, and like right. all these like rules and rigidity to this, like, how can I yeah. care for my body has a, a more trusting, yes. like if I care for my body in a way that's actually caring, yes, it will come. And that, yes. which, which, which can be um, a little less satisfying possibly is the word I'm looking for oh, when we're like looking yeah. for that, you know, it's January and I want the quick fix and I want to lose 12 pounds in 12 yeah, days, yeah. And, you know, and like right. whatever. And here's my neighbor yeah. and they're doing the whole 30 and they've already, you know, or my husband more likely who's, <laughs> who's lost, you know, all Done the keto like, diet and he dropped 40 pounds in two right, weeks for sure. And so, so why have you seen that those sort of quick fix diets don't work or that women often, you know, or people gain weight back after that initial bit of weight is lost? Yeah, there's at least two big reasons. And one is that you may not be eating enough Mm. um, and your body is going to try to correct for it. Um, Or you might be eating the kinds of things that trigger your body to change the hormone functioning, the insulin functioning, 
cortisol functioning. So all these, it's like a switch gets flipped in our body where our body says we're in trouble. We need mm. to make you hungry. We need to make you scavenge, you know, give you anxiety. Um, we need to really change what insulin is doing. So we store more fat. Mm. So we really need to learn how to flip a switch. So our body's functioning the way it should not like we're bears getting ready to hibernate. Mm. Cause that's what, that's what scientists sort of see is happening in our culture. Mm. We look like we're eating and changing our biochemistry in ways that bears getting ready to hibernate do. Oh, that's so fascinating. It's like our body's like, here she goes again. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> right. Like, okay, she's got the fruit out. Let's, right. <laughs> let's hold on. And then we, we feel like we're doing, we're doing what the doctors say. We're doing what the nutritionists say. Yeah. We're eating less, we're exercising more. We're starving and miserable and it's not working. Yeah. Like our, our doctors and nutritionists are trained in a culture that is misleading them too. They don't know. Yeah, I think that's super important. And, and if listeners have listened to enough of this podcast, um, I've had so many professionals on who are speaking of the gap in knowledge of female women's wellness and health particularly around our midlife that yes so again maybe in our 20s we could do the step aerobics you know and like the like yeah. exercise more eat less yeah. um yeah. and so we saw results but that doesn't work anymore it's it in the only reason right. it worked then is because we were just young and could, <laughs> our right. bodies could bounce back more but now our bodies are like those you know, bear her bodies are going, you've been abusing me for a long time. And for sure. Yeah. For sure. I like thinking yeah. it like back in the day, I was like a civic, you know, like a Honda civic, you could put anything in me and I'd run. And oh, I was like, yes. I only need five hours of sleep. I'm like, it's all right. good. I can. And now I'm a Lamborghini. I'm like, what? I need to be very particular <laughs> about the gas that goes into my, I need a yeah. certain amount of sleep and a certain yes. amount of darkness. And, a, and it's, yes. it, I mean, that feeds into that nurturing umbrella again to just, yes you know, what is kind to us. So it's interesting. You're talking about an umbrella. I want to correct one idea that yeah. I see differently from, from what I'm hearing you say, which is getting super clear how much of the different of the proteins and fats and fruits and vegetables and whole grains to eat really helped me. Okay. Um, so what we find in research is people on average are making over 200 eating and, and drinking decisions every day. Exhausting. It's ridiculous, yeah. exhausting, unnecessary, and it's because of this profit-driven culture we're in. Mm -hmm. When you're super clear, this is what my breakfast is, I have figured it out for me, this is mm -hmm. what my lunch is, this is what my dinner is, I'm not negotiating about, I'm going to hurt you a little bit today and make up for it tomorrow, because this is my meat, these are my meals. This is um, what feels good to me, right can figure out how to fall in love with those things and make it really habitual, it reduces a tremendous amount of emotional eating and stress and worry and I'm not sure. And we quit looking for tips every day. Mm -hmm. um, like I have figured out what umbrella of like doing what's kind to you recognizing it like it's not kind for us to go down to breakfast and be like, what do I want? Because we're, you know, making right. a decision in that moment. And, it's, and then I guess yes. the challenges is like, if we're truly being kind, it's like, okay, we made this decision ahead of time with our adult brain. This yeah. is what's helpful for us. And now in the moment when our child brain is like, but I want the, you know, fill yeah. in the blank, we're like, yeah. actually, this is what's best. For we're not going to waste our energy yeah. making this decision again. Let's use our mental right. energy on something else, like busting the patriarchy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The amount yeah. of time and energy I got back is unbelievable unbelievable yeah, me too. yeah i was able to start a new business like i mm -hmm. i dreamed of doing this kind of business 30 yeah. years ago but where was there any time yeah well it is it's in that deciding ahead of time is super yeah. helpful. and then the discipline to follow through and discipline yeah. i know for some people they're like huh. but that's the freedom that's that, that's the time freedom yeah. you're that's the emotional freedom i have when i'm not like what should i eat yes. was i good was i bad okay i get like yes a, an extra egg today. It's like, no, you're that's eating. exhausting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I just keep, yeah, sorry. Thinking about some, like somebody who just talked to me today about sort of almost every moment of her day, she's stressed about her weight and her eating and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And feeling like this addiction to food is making her absolutely miserable. And we don't have to live like that. That's what the food industry is happy to have us do, but we can take our brains back and our bodies back and mm. become really empowered to eat what's actually good for us, like like it matters, because it does. 
Yeah. So how do you start with a woman with some of those, you know, paying attention mm -hmm. more to the macros or the, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, um, well, that's really the first eight weeks of the Slender for Good program is let's show you what amounts of things to eat that that are proven to produce these great results of mm -hmm. reversing prediabetes and all these things and the weight loss comes really natural. So they learn that stuff in the first eight weeks and the rest of the year is, you know, is the, the crave the good process like how can you now fall in love with the good stuff now that you know what it is mm. um, and you're not fooling yourself anymore and how can you make it so effortless to eat mm. this way day after day meal after meal because what we have been trained to do is make constant exceptions and i have this analogy of it's like the steamship is going along the habits are going along people tell me all the time I know what to do, but I can't be consistent. Mm. It's because you're trying to pull this way and then pull that way. Yeah. That's not how you turn a steamship. These habits need to get interrupted, yeah. turned the other way, and then you need to build momentum, not, okay, I'm going along great. Now I'll go that way again. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does that make sense? I get yeah, all passionate. No, it abs I, I love that analogy. Like that is a perfect because yeah. it is. It's just like you can't turn a steamship that quickly. And and also that when you do turn it, then it might take a little bit, you know, to get it yeah. going. I, I like your idea of the building momentum and um yeah. 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 So yeah. I like what you're saying that the first period of time they sort of learn about what's what's better. What's for healthy. Yeah, yeah, and you get a you get inoculated a little bit to the marketing about this is healthy and this is healthy is it though mm. you know yeah, yeah so the focus is on sort of in like could you just give me a, a the listeners a bit of a taste and uh, you know pun intended for <laughs> mm. what like some things you might share in that well, eight I, weeks are or... I, uh, a little yeah so i teach them the four fundamental principles that i discovered and the first one is you have to eat abundant highly nutritious foods. Mm -hmm. So I need to teach people what are the highly nutritious foods versus mm -hmm. the things people are telling you are healthy, because mm -hmm. there's a huge difference, right? And what does abundant mean? Mm -hmm. So when I dug into the research, I was looking at the amount of vegetables that, for example, sound like they make a really big difference in the research. And I was like, oh, that's just mean. That's yeah. just way too much. And I just started deciding, what if you don't argue with it? What if you just try to find a way to thoroughly enjoy that much vegetables? And I, it's totally easy for me now, but um, mm. it's that kind of psychology we have to overcome. Even when you do get the answers, you're saying, yeah, but I don't think that applies to me or I don't really like that. Yeah. But figuring out what our body actually needs, it's just such a gift. Mm -hmm. I yeah. It, it, it really is. And I, I just, again, want to just echo for listeners that there might be some short term hard in learning these things mm -hmm. or, or, you know, when you're turning mm -hmm. the cruise ship around, like in setting new habits or not sitting down after dinner and having the sweet because there is some addiction there or not, you know, reaching, yes. learn, you know, figuring learn out, be okay, now I have to buy the vegetables. Now I have to cook them. And now, you know, yeah. Um, and yet it's effortful long at first. But right. people tell me really fast, it's actually, first they tell me, this actually isn't hard. Mm. And then they tell me, this is actually easy. Okay. Yeah. Because that's yeah. the part that I always say, like, choose your hard. Like, it, it might be yes. short-term hard, long-term ease. Or yes. A lot of us are doing now is short-term ease, long-term hard. You know, yes. They were ending up in the nursing home with these, you know, long yes. yeah, these lifestyle diseases and and difficult. I guess Jerry Seinfeld has a has a bit where he talks about, I, I know I should go to bed, but that's tomorrow Jerry's problem that I'm going to be tired. That's his problem tonight. I'm having a good time. And oh, I it's, love it. it's a good adulting lesson. Like, yeah, I know I feel like I'm going to like this now, but is it going to cause a problem for me tomorrow? And for yeah. me, it was like within five years, I'm not going to be able to walk anymore. And that was 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to like my life. I'm causing so many problems for her thinking she's a stranger. What if I start actually loving her yeah. and caring about her future? So now I've I moved to Mexico partly because I feel like I could live to be 100. Um, I really want the best quality of life and I better start now, you know? Yeah. Oh, I yeah, I really appreciate that. I, I love. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld. I've also heard 
um, I have a podcast episode. I don't know if it's coming out before or after this, but mm. I've done like um, productive discomfort and unproductive discomfort. Oh, you know, so yeah. This, yeah, like this idea that like productive discomfort would be resisting the urge the, that we have because we're addicted to it, uh, with, you know, whatever the yeah. eating thing is and, and choosing something different. I've also heard someone say like, it's, it's a choice between like the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Mm. You know, so oh. it's this like discipline mm. moment, you're going to feel that mm. maybe that feels a little hard or you're going to have, you know, mm. regret tomorrow or in five years when you can't walk or, you know, what, what right. is, so I, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't want to have those regrets. I don't want to end up in a nursing home. Yeah. And so, it just turned out to not be hard. Yeah, I love that. I, I love what you're saying. Yeah. And it is, it's it's that like these little habits build up momentum. And so then we we might be this cruise ship going in the other direction. And, yeah. and um, I do think this is a great time of year for people to bring themselves back to like, where is their cruise ship headed? Is the cruise yes. ship, is theirs headed to that, you know, lifestyle disease? Like it's, it's this like, yes. at some point we sort of wake up and we're like, okay, my daily habits come yeah. to become... Right. Yeah, yes. so that, you know, in both ways, like resisting yeah. the glass of wine one night compounds in a really big way, or yes. having a glass of wine every night compounds in a really big way. And we get to. Yes. And we have it. cultural ideas that say it, this won't matter. Uh, you can make up for it tomorrow. We have a whole litany of those. Mm. And I just have learned to say that's a lie. This yeah. won't matter. That's a lie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there, it's like who's saying it won't matter is also super helpful to look at. Like it might be the advertisers. It also might be your friends who want you right. to think it doesn't matter because what are they going to do if they don't have their drinking or eating? Mm -hmm. budget? Right. Yeah. yeah. It is. Right. And they want to offer you something easy in the moment. Mm. Yes. I'm going yeah. to bring over a bottle of wine and that's going to help you feel better because I can't stand that you're upset. When we really love somebody, we let them be upset and we listen and. When yeah. we really love ourselves, we let ourselves be upset and listen. What's going on, Ginny? What happened today that you really feel you need a drink? Oh, for you don't... sure. Yeah. Yeah, I have a whole um, class in the Love Your Life School, which is my my membership I have for women yeah. um, over 40. And it's on emotional eating. And one of the exercises in there is like you can mm. go ahead and eat, but first write down the emotion that you're feeling. Yes. And then like what do you need? You know, because it is yeah. so under on both sides, happy, you know, emotions that are helpful, you know, and maybe I'm sorry, comfortable to feel and emotions that are uncomfortable to feel. So you got to raise, yeah. let's go celebrate with some tacos, you know, or, yeah. you know, you had a breakup, let me bring over the cookies or the wine and, right. and we'll get through this. It's like food is just this quick fix to yes. help with the emotion versus you know, choosing, you know, what do you need? Okay. I just need a friend to come over and sit and let's, yeah. or what do you need? I need to go out and dance and, and just yeah. live it up. Um, but getting in yeah. touch with slowing down, yes. feeling the emotion, labeling it and, and having yeah. another tool in your toolbox that isn't just food. Yeah. Or alcohol. Love it. Really oh, I got to learn more about your love your life school. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a, it's a great, it's a great place to be a great campus. Um, and it's funny because nice. we are working on habits this month in January. It's sort of habits uh, and behaviors and, and all of that. So nice. yeah, yeah. The work that you and I are doing, it is, it is helpful. And it is that like small changes make big results and yes, you, you know, what I'm hearing from your message today is just so much freedom and lightness mm. and empowerment, which you don't get that feeling when we're, when we're normally talking about quote unquote diets. Like, no, this, you don't. It's the yeah. opposite. It's, it's, it's deprivation and it's heavy. Yeah. you're wrong. You're not doing it right. You know, yes. and, and this, and like, I love holding, I on. love that you call the people in your community warriors. And yeah. I do too, in the slender for good community. And it's not because it's so hard, but there is a certain amount of warrior spirit when you're doing something that is so much healthier than what other people are doing on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. It takes yeah. courage to takes you courage. Know, when you're yeah. at a book club and everyone's having wine and you're like, no, I'm good, you know, and then they yeah. push back. Or if you're going to a social event and you bring mm -hmm. a big, you know, you don't bring a big thing of, or you're, or you push back, I guess where it also takes courage is if someone, I just heard one of my um, warriors in the Love Your Life School, 
someone was like, let's go out to dinner for this. And she said, well, could we do a hike instead? Like, I, you know, mm -hmm. I want to connect, yeah. but I like, let's, you know, first of all, yeah. I love the movement and, and that takes a little bit of courage doing something yes. outside of the norm. Um, it and does. So and, and, but then it feels so rewarding. You feel so empowered by it. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love it. So thank you. So I will have links to all of your wonderful stuff um, in the show okay. notes for sure. Yeah. And where would you direct listeners to get started? Yeah, go to slenderforgood.com. I have a roadmap to sustainable weight loss after 40 there. I'm offering, a, uh, I offer events sometimes that are free, that are life changing, that I'd love to have people come to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you find me, slenderforgood.com. Okay. And the show notes warriors will be at smbwell.com slash 283. So I will have all her links, Slender for Good. She's on LinkedIn. She just reach out and let her know what, you know, she spent her time here with us. Let's let her know how it was helpful. And also how cool, if you join her Splendor for Good program, let me know. It's so exciting. I love. Before and after pictures. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank this you. is wonderful.